Let's take a look at one of the finest character duelists in the chapter, the chapter champion. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, the tactics and strategy focused 40k channel, where we try and get the most out of our models on the tabletop. We've been going through all the new Space Marine rules from Faith and Fury, trying to unlock any potentially new good combos on the battlefields. Today it's time to put the chapter champion under the lens and see what he can do for us. So without further ado, let's get into his rules. So, as per all the other Space Marine Masters of the Chapter in Faith and Fury, the chapter champion is a one command point upgrade for a company champion in your Space Marine army. It can't be used if you already have a chapter champion, the Ultramarines have a unique datasheet for a chapter champion, so if you have him in your Ultramarines army, you can't use this stratagem. The Black Templars also have a specific rule that means that you can't use this stratagem, because of course they have the Emperor's champion, who frankly is awesome, he's very very strong for his points, so I don't think they should really be all that jealous of not getting a chapter champion. You can use this stratagem once per battle, and it gives your company champion the chapter champion keyword, and they get the skillful parry special rule, which subtracts one from the hit rolls of melee weapons attacking the champion. He also gains an extra attack, which is certainly going to help him out in close combat as well. Now the company champions are already pretty decent character hunters, so this only ups that ability. He'll both be more aggressive and more durable in close combat, and that's only a good thing. Whether or not the upgrade is worth it though is a bit of a close call I think. It is only one command point, but Space Marines have a lot of very powerful ways to spend command points, such as getting other relics or warlord traits or things, and you have to decide whether or not those buffs are worth that use of that command point to you or not. Unlocking him as a chapter champion also allows you to take some warlord traits for him. The first is Master Duelist. When an enemy attacks this model and rolls a hit roll of a 1, or a 4+, plus, that model suffers a mortal wound. I believe that this would probably combine with skillful parry in the same way that plasma guns overcharge on 1s when you have a minus to hit modifier, so it would typically mean that you get the chance to have these 1s or 2s turn into mortal wounds on a 4+. plus. So this is actually really quite a powerful rule. If it does go off how I think it does on 1s and 2s, then it basically means one in every six attacks directed at the chapter champion will result in a mortal wound for your opponent. This has the potential to be fairly powerful if you're charging him in against a decent amount of infantry. If he does charge a whole host of orcs and they go to town on him with something like 60 attacks, on average he's going to be kicking out a mighty 10 mortal wounds with this. So a genuinely very powerful counterpunch there. It's a little bit less good if he's fighting against fighty characters with decent rerolls, as it means they'll get less 1s or 2s. But every little helps, and because this could be so potentially powerful against certain units, it could be worth taking. This would certainly be an option for a good pickup against any sort of melee horde. Next up is Martial Exemplar, and this is actually another really good warlord trait. Friendly units within 6 inches, so including himself, can reroll charges. This is really quite a powerful buff, and it could mean that if you have a whole load of characters nearby that all want to pile into close combat, then they could do so very reliably. But the place where this could really shine could be when you're coming in from reserve. If you're using a drop pod, you could have this guy drop down with, say, nine other vanguard veterans, and they could all re-roll their charges to see if they could get into close combat. That takes a lot of the uncertainty out of tactics like that, particularly if you combine it with some other way to buff charges, say by an inch or two. That's a decently strong trait, it'll help him out, and it'll help nearby units out. Now we go on to his relics. First of all we have a snazzy power sword, the Blade of Triumph. Replacing his mastercrafted power sword, it gives him strength plus two, AP minus four, and damage three. Now this will really make a nasty mess of any enemy characters, and certainly be very strong against any 3 wound infantry. By having flat 3 damage it's also not awful against vehicles, although the strength on it is a little bit lacking. This relic will certainly make him an all round powerhouse, I'd say that it's probably superior to the burning blade due to that flat damage 3. I think I'd prefer to have damage 3 than strength 7. Decent little relic, it'll certainly make the chap's champion do better at his job. 
when he's fighting characters or vehicles, but won't necessarily help him much against infantry compared with his already quite decent mastercrafted power sword. Next we have the Angel Artifice, which basically makes him very tanky. It gives him a 2 up armor save and a 4 up invul save, so he's doing a decent imitation of an Emperor's Champion for the Black Templars. I don't think that this is a bad pick per se, but if I was going for durability upgrades, I'd probably put them on key characters to my entire army's strategy. Say, a vital chapter master who's providing re-rolls to a bunch of units and maybe doing something else with his warlord traits for a fairly cheap and cheerful melee bruiser. I'd be more inclined to give him the fancy power sword, the blade of triumph, so he can do a massive amount of damage and not worry too much if he dies rather than trying to keep him alive and give him less chance of actually accomplishing the one thing he's supposed to do. So I prefer the blade, but it's certainly a decent defensive buff, and there's nothing wrong with it at all. Bear in mind that the armor Indomitus might also be a better pick than this, due to it giving you a 3-up inball save at the time when you most need it. So overall, the chap's champion basically makes the company champion do what he does better, plus one attack, better survivability in melee, and then you can further upgrade that with a few interesting warlord traits or relics. I think that if I chose to field him, I'd be most likely to use the Master Duelist Warlord trait and the Blade of Triumph, or to stick him in a drop pod and use that Martial Exemplar option to re-roll those charges for some veterans who are coming along for the ride. He is certainly a strong option, although it certainly makes regular marines envious of the Emperor's Champion, who pretty well gets most of these abilities just built into his points cost, and he's not all that expensive either. So, interesting options. I'm not the biggest fan of the Company Champion datasheet as it stands at the moment, due to him being a bit slow and mono role, role for hunting characters in combat, but if you are using one, then this could certainly be a decent upgrade. Thanks very much for listening to another Auspets Tactics video. If I've made any mistakes with rules, please let me know. And if you can see any cool synergies with the chapter champion, please post it down below as well. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, or to support me on Patreon if you would like to help out the channel. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.